However, we don't live in that world. We don't live in a country where there's like a reasonable amount of people that are vaccinated, double vaccinated, boosted up. We don't live in that I world. We that. live on we live on a planet. We live on a continent. We live in a country where homies are straight up like, yeah, no, I, I'm just not getting vaccinated still. I'm not going to do it. You can't make me do it. You can't make me do it. I will not get vaccinated. So Ben Shapiro is now Ben Shapiro is saying that CNN has discovered the Joe Rogan show. Wait, what? Dude, I love I love the COVID misinformation. We're going to dive straight into it. OK, because like I saw I saw a post by Tim Pool again. And, uh, and he is just like doubling, tripling, quadrupling down, okay? And saying like more idiotic shit about COVID. I feel like these guys have gone buck wild on the COVID stuff. Um, you know, everybody's talking about mass psychosis. I feel like the staying power that Joseph Robinette Rogan has with respect to like changing the dynamic and, and changing people's attitudes or rather starting a conversation is still OP. He's still goaded as no matter what, like his influence may be uh, waning, but whenever he has like a weirdo, whenever he has a weirdo host or weirdo guests on, type this dream okay, gets fixed every toe on the planet, every thumb on the planet, every cop, every weirdo gets activated. They like, there's like an alarm bell that rings in their houses and they're like, oh, what's the latest on Joe Rogan? Okay, time to download all that misinformation and then spread it out into the public. So that's the reason why motherfuckers are now doing uh you know the the mass psychosis theory and you know that's what's happening with covid meanwhile they themselves are the reason why there is a fuck like if anything they are the ones who are doing mass psychosis okay what's up uh, so whenever there's a gringo making a vid about brazil it insta gets one million views van pro brazil yeah if rogan runs in 2024 as a libertarian fascist weed bro who found god he takes 350 electoral yes Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan, if he ran for president on the conservative ticket, would make the map. He would literally make the map look like the COVID map right now. Have you guys seen that, by the way? Holy crap. The, the, the okay, COVID new cases guys, map in America is all red. Viral transmission is all red everywhere, like the entire country. Because Omicron is ripperoning through the goddamn country. Okay. Now, there is some cause for I mean, there's obviously cause One for concern because even if omicron is like 50 percent less deadly or leads to 50 percent less hospitalizations it's still you know triply as viral so you know motherfuckers are still getting clapped even if it's less deadly why are they still getting clapped even if it's less deadly time because motherfuckers the don't have the have vaccine transgender pride okay it's obviously not going to stop you from getting COVID, but it's certainly going to stop you from going to the hospital, especially if you're boosted. 81% less likely to go to the hospital if you're boosted with Trans COVID. Rights. So what the overall consensus pride. right now in the United States, according to doctors, uh, you know, ER room, people that work in emergency uh, ER room, people that work in ERs, is that if you're here with COVID, either you are immunocompromised already, or, and it's like fight. impossible for Let's you to avoid it and you got it and you're immunocompromised so you're here or in the more common case the in, in infinitely more common case unvaccinated that's it okay if you're relatively healthy if you are vaxxed up double vaxxed especially if you're boosted you get covid you take it on a chin bro doesn't mean that it's still you know something you should seek after obviously okay but still not great okay still not great but if you if you're boosted the fuck up you're you know pretty much ggs okay uh the reason why i mentioned this is because it's going to be important to the lead up to the cdc decision that we're going to discuss in a second minor f baby f wheezy f baby yeah all right we're back no brain rot small f yet it's gonna happen these f's are gonna keep happening okay it's just a uh, part of the stream now just uh, learn to love uh learn to love the f on the fight against COVID, the U.S. averaging a record shattering more than 400,000 cases per day now. This as millions of kids are heading back to school this morning. Our Trevor Alt is live at a school here in New York with the latest for us. Trevor, good morning. Good morning, TJ. This is truly a unprecedented start to the year here with a record shattering number of new infections. And that is impact. Three people are getting COVID every second. Three new people are getting COVID every second right now 
this shit is impossible to avoid okay the only certainties of life are no longer just death and taxes it's also getting the omicron variant of covid okay now i'm not saying this to freak you the fuck out because a lot of people are freaking the fuck out how do you address people claiming that cdc is suppressing data and scientists what i there is no evidence for that whatsoever okay i don't know what to say to some weird shit like that i don't think the cdc is suppressing evidence and scientists Anyway, let's keep going. Impacting hospitals, it's impacting businesses, and it especially is going to be impacting schools. The education secretary says schools around the country who are hoping to return to the classroom could very easily have five, ten percent of their staff Hello. out sick with COVID to now start this new year. This morning, the new year is off to an unprecedented start with record-breaking levels of COVID infections across the country. Cases skyrocketing more than 200 percent in the past two weeks. On average, now more than 400,000 reported a day, more than ever before. Well, we are definitely in the middle of a very severe surge and uptick in cases. The Omicron variant triggering explosive outbreaks in areas like Puerto Rico. New infections there increasing 4,490%. And hospitalizations, while lagging, are on the rise. Patient numbers in New York mirroring the levels of this time last year. Are you concerned that the CDC is lowering the quarantine period to appease anti-vaxxers? I don't think they're doing that to appease anti-vaxxers. I think they're doing that to appease big business, as I've stated before. And I do believe that is going on. One of the insanely unacceptable things that the CDC did, uh, other than, you know, straight up reducing the quarantine period from 10 days to five without any new additional data available, without making their, without even making their data available uh, as to how they arrived at that decision and then openly admitting that they did it so that society does not collapse and that, you know, businesses will continue to function was the, uh, the, the way that they said it, which was if you get COVID for five days, after five days, you can go back to fucking work with no extra qualifiers. Like there wasn't a, there wasn't a specific thing where you had to get two negative PCR tests. You know what I mean? Now the CDC is going back on that and potentially adding that, uh, two negative, uh, two negative test results before you're able to go back into public after five days, uh, I guess restriction. Right. Um, but the issue is it's too late. Okay. You already came out of the gate swinging and you said five days instead of 10 and you didn't even require negative testing. And as a matter of fact, even went so far as to say you might still be showing positive on tests, but you're probably not as, uh, you know, you're probably not spreading COVID anymore. There are a couple issues here. Okay. One, if the, if 100% of the population was already vaxxed up with COVID. Okay. If 100% of the population was vaxxed up with the, with the COVID vaccines, right? then it doesn't matter. Yeah, get COVID, get Omicron, whatever the f you're fine. You're gonna be fine. You're not gonna die. You're not gonna go to the hospital. You're gonna be out for like two days, three days, right? You're gonna be out for two days. You're gonna feel bad. You're not gonna have your taste, but you're gonna recover. It's gonna be similar to the seasonal flu. As a matter of fact, it's gonna be, as I've said before, most likely less deadly than the seasonal flu. However, okay, however, we don't live in that world. We don't live in a country where there's like a reasonable amount of people that are vaccinated, double vaccinated, boosted up. We don't live in that I world. We that. live on we live on a planet. We live on a continent. We live in a country where homies are straight up like, yeah, no, I, I'm just not getting vaccinated still. I'm not going to do it. You can't make me do it. You can't make me do it. I will not get vaccinated. So if you're that guy, one, the likelihood that COVID doesn't escape your body or leave your body in the immediate five days or three days or whatever the recovery period is, uh, obviously increases. Okay. So if you are unvaccinated, you're f***ing up the whole game for the rest of us. XQC, okay. Yeah. At this stage, if you're unvaccinated, you're not only not protecting yourself, but you're also the reason why we have to implement these rigorous lockdown measures. If we lived in a country where everybody was vaccinated, I would be advocating first and foremost, like I did originally, when the vaccines first came out, it's like a full blown open up the economy. I'm trying to suck on doorknobs uh, type beat. OK, that's what I, that's what my advocacy would be in. But because we're not there, because we are never going to get there. Unfortunately, we have to take more restrictive measures. OK, now the real the real fear that I have, even though uh, Antonio Fauci is uh, personally considering uh, implement or not personally, but the CDC is considering implementing 
uh, five day testing measures on top of the, uh, the lowered quarantine restrictions, uh, I guess improving the restriction, uh, improving the quarantine restrictions a little bit by saying you at least have to get tested. But the reason why they didn't do that originally, my fear, my speculation is because there aren't tests. Okay. Because as is the case with every single step of this goddamn pandemic or bandemic, whatever you want to call it, we have consistently fallen short on what is necessary. We just don't have tests. So what are you going to do? You don't have a test. You can't get tested. So what's up? You're not going to get back to work? No, of course. They want you to get the f back to work because the yeah, ultimate goal is get the f back to work. Tesla love you. And I believe that's the real reason why they uh, only, uh, they, after lowering it to five days, they didn't actually uh, qualify that by stating you can only get out in public in five days after you tested negative. Okay? The so, real bottom line that you want to be concerned about is are we getting protected by the vaccines from severe disease leading to hospitalization? Dr. Fauci says the CDC may now update Yo, some of its new guidance, today. potentially Thanks recommending people with asymptomatic infections and no fever get a negative test before ending their isolation at five days. And there's growing concern for children. Just last Why is there growing concern for children? Because more children than ever before are showing up in hospitals now. Enjoying the content. Why are they no, showing no, up no, in no, hospitals? No. Pepe, because no. they are the highest unvaccinated population. So because they're the highest unvaccinated population, now the number is still, you know, insignificant in comparison to like who's actually dying from COVID. But given that we do not know the long-term results of getting COVID, the likelihood that you could get long COVID, the likelihood that, you know, it could have debilitating problems down the line, even including like losing IQ points with brain fog and shit like that over the course of COVID, like it, it has created a situation where kids are also at risk, okay? Babies are getting COVID. How are you going to deal with that? How do you know what, what kind of, what kind of negative consequence that's going to have on your child? Huh. Can't believe the kids are anti-vax people. Pago. Yeah. yeah, no, it's the, yeah, it's the little baby who's like, I don't want to get this vaccine. Goo goo gaga mother. Last week, the nation reported a 66% increase in children admitted to the hospital because of COVID like symptoms. This morning, the FDA now authorizing booster shots for 12 to 15 year olds. But the youngest kids, still fully unvaccinated, are still at risk. The high fevers came in waves. She just laid on me basically for three days straight. Thank you. Hussein Sarah Barlow's two year old months. daughter tested positive and spent four days in the hospital. Minor F. F is incoming. F is going. There's always going to be a 1% drop uh, of frames, okay? We're now, you know, CDCDs. It's just going to happen. I'll pause the video when it happens and I'll continue. It's just like click, 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 couple F's in succession, and then we move on, okay? Don't cry about it. Let's keep going. It can get bad. It's not just a simple cold for, for everybody. And now America's schools are weighing whether to reopen. Dozens of colleges are already gearing up to start their semesters online. Atlanta Public Schools is switching to online-only classes this week. But in New York City, about a million students are expected to be back in person with new COVID safety measures. We lost almost two years of education. We can't do it again. And all that demand for testing. So we need tests. We need tests. We need to we need to have as many tests as possible so we can figure out who the fuck has COVID. But we don't have enough tests. We need to, we need tests to be able to get back to work. We need tests to be able to figure out if we should quarantine. And the CDC's decision reflects that need, reflects that reality. And this five day quarantine shit straight up reeks of don't wear masks, okay? Like they did in the beginning of the pandemic. Remember when the CDC said, oh yeah, don't wear a mask. It's not that important. Masks don't actually provide coverage. And then they came out and were like, actually, we had to lie to you about the mask thing because, uh, you know, we needed PPO for, uh, nice we needed, we needed protective gear for our nurses and for our healthcare, uh, uh, folks, you know what I mean? Our folks in healthcare. And I, I feel like we're literally a PPO PPE. Sorry. I feel like we're literally doing that right now because there's not enough tests out there. How are you going to rip the rest of the planet, exhaust all natural resources, exploit and extract all natural resources in the third world, do imperialism, and then you still can't, you know, you, you still can't offer tests to the American public in a time of need.
What's up, dude? How are you not going to do that? How are you not going to be able to do that? Shit's like falling apart, okay? Let's go. And for the record, uh, there is that negative consequence that we saw of the CDC saying, yeah, you don't have to wear a mask, right? Remember? The conservatives never gave that up. They talked about it nonstop. As a matter of fact, they talk about it to this day. Remember when Dr. Anthony Fauci said, don't wear a mask, and then they wanted you to wear a mask? Well, why would I wear a mask if they can't even figure it out? When I originally criticized the CDC's decision to, uh, to, to basically change the quarantine restrictions without any new evidence, without any new data, that other epidemiologists were also, that other epidemiologists were, were uh, upset about, epidemiologists were upset about outside of the CDC. This was one of my main concerns. Obviously my primary concern was now COVID is gonna spread even harder at a time when Omicron is just ripping through the country. And my second concern was that this would greatly undermine the authority of the CDC, which is why I always got annoyed when people were just trying to state that I was doing conspiracy theories about the CDC. Guess what? I was right. Look at Ben Shabibo. Ben Shapiro, who is, of course, a misinformation uh, agent himself, had this to say about the CDC's uh, decision. Where is it? Twitchy team caught a good Twitter thread from... Wait, hold on. Hold on. I'm just going to... I'm going to... I don't want to free scroll on Twitter. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Ben, ben also said that uh, the CDC is... So the new, so the vaccine only works against the virus that the vaccinated people are transmitting. I'm so confused. Yeah, you are confused because you're a f***ing idiot. Okay. Fauci says vaccinated and boosted people could do things like go outside restaurants if they know people around them are also vaccinated and boosted. Did. Yeah, this is like, there is a failure to communicate the problem here. There's a failure in communication. And Antonio Fauci's only job is to quite literally communicate this shit. Tobias. Okay. Let's go. Oh, here it is. Here, this is what I was going to say. So yesterday, Ben should be able to tweet this out when the U.S. is considering adding a negative test to its five-day isolation guidance for people with asymptomatic COVID-19. The White House's top medical advisor says, Dr. Anthony Fauci says, uh, the CDC got significant pushback on its recommendation last week. I was f***ing right. Everyone else, once again, that shit on me for negative, uh, negative engagement farming was completely f***ing wrong. Now... That's unimportant, obviously, in the grand scheme of things. What's actually important with respect to this story is that obviously this kind of change. Thanks for okay. The left obviously, this kind of change in the CDC's rhetoric, when their main goal is to set these guidelines and communicate them effectively, is that this kind of misinformation will be utilized by people like Ben Shapiro to further uh, cause chaos and to further undermine its credibility. And that's precisely what he's doing here. Amazing how quickly the science changes. Miraculous how fast new data pours in. No wonder only the experts, trademark, can understand it. Probably it's, it's totally apolitical and has nothing to do with the public pressure from the administration's leftist like allies. Like PC, please so respond. what this moron, what this baboon is uh, admitting slash also failing to consider is that, yes, there is a level of public pressure that they are influenced by, Okay. It's Let's about who they're getting that what? pressure from, though. And if this dumbass does not comprehend that, like, the original decision to lower it is pressure from the business owners and those who are titans of commerce, then I don't know what to tell you. That is precisely what is going on here. The original decision, as admitted by Fauci, was to make sure that commerce continues, to make sure that society functions, because there weren't going to be enough pilots there weren't going to be enough hostesses. There weren't going to be enough uh, waitresses. There weren't going to be enough retail workers during the holiday season. And God forbid that happens in a country like the United States of America. Then, you know, full-blown economic collapse, boys, because of the way that Omicron was spreading, because of how fast Omicron was spreading. And that's the reason why they went balls to the wall and didn't even include a negative test in their original uh, lowering of the quarantine restrictions. Hassle. So while Ben Shapiro is technically right in the sense that yes some of these decisions are made by outside influences and it's not necessarily it's more like a balance it's a delicate balancing act between what the public's perception is going to be how much they actually follow the restrictions that are placed by the cdc and also where the stress is coming from so if the public uh, if the public is not following the protocols they're like well maybe we should lower them so that they will actually follow the protocols which is idiotic in my opinion 
okay? Because that's precisely Just what they said, by the way. This is not my take. This is the CDC's own narrative on this issue. They said they did this because not, that because, not because there was new data available. There wasn't. But because, one, the public was not following five-day uh, or ten-day quarantine measures anyway because it was far too long for them. So the public stress is there. And also because uh, Omicron was ripping through the lands and when Omicron is uh, spreading so rapidly, and uh, if you're vaccinated, it has less likelihood of, of you over. Uh, it's less severe, 50% less hospitalization, at least according to data coming out of the UK, that uh, it's not necessary to quarantine for as long, especially because if you are asymptomatic and vaccinated, the likelihood that you're going to continue spreading it uh, in the aftermath of five days is lower. Okay? F. So... Having said all that, that's the reason why they made this because of uh, additional public pressure from, you know, obviously business owners. Yes, I know there's an F. I am aware. There's public pressure from those who are... Oh, shit. Okay, dude. There's no shot. This is exclusively... Hold on. Anyway. Sparkling hot. As I was stating... Sparkling hot. As I was stating, however, like I said, as I was stating... That we are at a we are at a point where the CDC, in my opinion, fucked up, like they did originally, like Fauci did originally about mask wearing, okay, and that this will be used against them by misinformation agents and those who want to uh, further undermine the CDC's credibility beyond what they are doing to themselves, okay. These are uncertain times, but the only certainty is that you're probably going to get COVID if you go outside. You're probably going to get Omicron, but also. Most likely, if you're boosted, if you're vaccinated, if you're double vaxxed, it's not going to be as bad as the prior versions of COVID. The only other certainty similar to that is the top of the hour ad break that comes at the top of the hour. 60 second ad break okay. that is unavoidable unless, unless you have already subscribed for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. Or if you got gifted a sub, gifted subs unfortunately are inconsistent though. Uh, you know, you might not get it like antibodies. You might not get the gift of sub. You might not get lucky. People will be gifting it, but you might not be the one who receives it. So the certainty is with a $5 subscription or a Twitch Prime, which is free. Here's the one minute ad break now. I'm double vaxxed, no booster, and this variant is a pain in the ass. At least I'm not hospitalized right now. Now, in many instances, slow down the wait for your results. One of the nation's largest testing companies, Quest Diagnostics, tells ABC money. that their average processing time has gone. What do you say to people who go, I'm following guidelines. I say, sto I stay socially distanced and take the consequences for not taking the vaccine, but I won't take the vaccine because I'm not afraid of dying. Umbrella six, thank you for the five of the subs. I don't know, man. Then die. That's what you say. Then, then if you get COVID, I'm not going to mourn you. And I'm going to make fun of you actually for dying on your own. Like you wanted to die so bad and now you're dead or worse. You're in the hospital uh, and, and you're not dead yet. I'm going to sit there and I'm going to shoot a TikTok video literally doing the Fortnite L dance over your dying body, okay? As a, as a team of nurses try to, you know, make sure that you don't get bed sores from laying on one side. I'm gonna be waiting for that shift change so that I can get the right moment so I can do a, you know, uh, 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 L nerd dance. That's what you should tell people. And then they'll cry and they'll be like, oh, what do you mean? That's kind of fucked up. And then, you know, you turn around and you say, okay, well then avoid it, dumbass, okay? You don't want me to TikTok dance over your dying body at the hospital when you got a vent yeah. inside of your throat, okay? Then get the vaccine. It's like there's nothing you can do. You're you're talking to a brick wall. You're talking to someone who's like, I understand that death is a possibility, and I do not care. If you are I not guess. afraid of dying, then you should not care that I'm gonna make fun of you when you die, okay? It's really simple. Don't die, okay? Vented patients are unconscious. Yes, but while the person you're talking to has the processing power of a vegetable, their brain is supposed to understand that, like, before they get vented, you know, you'll still make fun of them. So right now, I suspect the person you're talking to having a conversation is not vented yet, and they're not unconscious yet. So they'll understand that that anger and that, that fear of resentment and that, uh, you know, uh, you're emotionally manipulating them into getting the vaccine is basically what I'm saying. Okay? Vent... Went golfing with my conservative unvaxxed friend Let's Friday, see. and he didn't tell me that his girlfriend that he lives with tested positive three days prior. We drove together, and he didn't wear a mask in the car. I'm beyond pissed, and I don't know if I can keep being his friend, to be honest. Yeah, that shit is really fucked up. I mean, it's, like, completely unacceptable, dude. That's, like, 
four months if, baby if dying back. fat and old people are die it's fat and old people that are dying you should stop scaremongering hi hassy motherfuckers be like oh fat people are dying i'm like have you looked around you live in like oklahoma dog now there are obviously systemic issues that we need to conquer to be able to fix america's diets but that's a long-term solution that's not easy to deal with right now. So in the short term, before we fix that long-term problem, maybe we should focus on areas where, I don't know, we could save fat and old people from dying. I think that's a good way to go about it. I'm fat. My entire family's fat. I don't want them to die. Love you, chat. Stay healthy gone from about one day to now two or three days. And with Omicron's transmissibility, that extra wait time, it can make a big difference. TJ. All right, Trevor Hall. Okay, let's move on. CBS News. This one is Dr. David Agus on Omicron spread, CDC guidelines, and boosters for kids. That's Dr. David Agus joins us now to bring us up to date on all the latest COVID stuff. I want to pick it up, David, with where Meg just left off, that they did not require months, a negative test after five days of isolation. That struck, that struck a lot of people as not making any sense. Did it make sense to you? Certainly, uh, if we had the resources and the ability, I think a negative test at five days makes all the sense in the world. When you look at the data, it takes about seven days till most people start to test negative, and some even longer. So having that negative test is a way to stop the virus. The problem is we are still limited with testing in this country. But I also heard the CDC say that sometimes you can test positive even though you're no longer emitting any of the you can you, you can test positive although you're no longer dangerous and that's why they said listen you don't after five days you're okay it was very confusing yeah I mean there, there isn't you're right. There is an issue is that the test looks for 30 letters, the 30,000 letters of the code. And you could see that in viral fragments. So you may test positive, positive even though you're not infectious. And we've seen people test positive several weeks out without being infected. So it's not, you know, a simple answer. Certainly, if you test negative in five days, it is safe for you to go out with a mask over the next five days. Yes. This is the main point is that Let's like. Start. If you test negative in the first in the first five days, okay, if you get two, if you get especially if you get a double negative test, like yeah, then you're fine, okay. And a lot of vaccinated people are reporting both feeling fine and even showing negative on tests, okay. But ultimately, if you release that, if you if you if you change the restrictions, the parameters of what the quarantine is supposed to look like in a country where there's still a fuckload of unvaccinated people. Okay, then everyone's gonna be like, all right, I'm good after five days. Let's go YOLO, especially when you don't specify that you have to test negative to get out of quarantine. Wild, wildly irresponsible. The real question are the others. We need more testing. Testing needs to increase across the country to be able to stop the spread of the virus. Monkers, Let's monkers, talk about monkers. the kids going back to school because schools really seem to be trying to figure this out. Do you think it's safe for children to go back into the class today? I think we're going to have to, you know, we have to have in-person learning. And what we need is, again, more testing in the school. So testing should be mandated in schools. And if you test negative, you can go to school. I think that's the way we should be doing things. And much of the world is doing that, particularly in the European countries. And you have to have a mask mandate when numbers are up, like they are in most of the country with Omicron. Now, let's talk about the number of uh, Omicron cases. We keep hearing the, the numbers are very scary, David. You hear 300,000 that they've topped. We keep hearing it hasn't even hit the peak yet. Should we be focusing on the number of cases or the number of hospitalizations? How scared should we be about this number? I think you hit it, Gail. I mean, we had a half a million cases in a day over the last few days. Being and so hospitalizations are what matter. If you look at a state like play, Maryland that has one of the highest vaccination down. rates, they're at the highest rate of hospitalization they've been in throughout the almost two years of the pandemic. So there are places now where particularly unvaccinated individuals with this rapid spread of Omicron are basically filling up hospitals. We're canceling elective procedures in much of Los Angeles. I've had patients, cancer patients, where their surgeries for cancer have all been canceled over the last week and going forward because hospitals are building filled up. And what we need to focus on is that number because that is what's limiting our society in many respects. And so Omicron will spread. We're going to peak over the next several weeks, particularly in areas that had an early onset of Omicron. And then it'll go down afterwards. But over the next several weeks, it's going to be rough. Yeah, we're at, we're at the total GG boys. Uh, it's a wrap age of the pandemic more than before. No.
obviously we were already at the gg no re dola, stage dola, from the jump one. like we were like eh, f it we'll be fine when uh we didn't have enough mass enough protective gear we were like eh, f it covid will go away just sit at home for 14 days stage in the beginning of the pandemic and like throughout the entire throughout the entire pandemic Love we have seen time and time again less than three. we're like ah f it it'll be all right a hundred thousand other people die and then we're like oh man that was really bad okay that was really bad all right well what about now and then the the pandemic keeps like throwing new uh hurdles in front of us and we just keep saying f it gang. now we've officially gotten to a point where even the cdc is like yeah it's all right you know we just don't have enough tests boys we do not have enough tests okay too many people got covid we do not have enough tests we are doing what the uk oi bruvs did originally when boris johnson famously came out and said we're gonna tell you on the fucking chinny bruv yes that's right we're going to be taking it on the chin i'm boris johnson and uh you know covid has won and that's that's the point we're at now you know great any mexicans in chat hassle. what a throw what a giant throw Ah, uh, screw this. I'm gonna go watch you on YouTube. I'm gonna go watch you on YouTube. I'm gonna go watch you on YouTube. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>